Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there is an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. everyone and welcome to my zone online school my name is teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today our theme this week is transport and communication and before we get into any lessons boys and girls it is important for us to sanitize so let's take our sanitizer and remember when you're sanitizing you need to make sure that your whole hand for both sides is well covered with sanitizer make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else for today's lesson we will be talking about punctuation fractions and addition For our exercise now, let us turn to page 9. On page 9, we are going to be doing punctuation. Now, the type of punctuation we're going to be doing is to put capital letters and adding other punctuation marks for the passage we can see. Now, as you can see, it's one long sentence that we are going to First, try and read without punctuation. <laughs> so, I would like you to take a deep breath because this is going to be very hard. Are you ready? Take your deep breath. And Ben and Mal are going on a field trip. They are going to the farm. They are very excited. Ben wants to see the cows. Mal wants to see the horses. <gasps> Oh my goodness, <laughs> this definitely needs some punctuation. So it's going to be our job to do it together. Now the first thing that you're going to notice about this is that there are no capital letters anyway. So as we go along, we're going to talk about where to put the capital letters as well. So remember, our heading is the field trip. Now the first thing I want you to do with your pen or pencil is start our sentence, the first sentence with a capital letter. Because every time we start a sentence, boys and girls, we have a capital letter. So in this case, we are going to start with capital letter B for the word Ben. And Ben is not just a word, but a name of a person. So we are going to put a capital letter for Ben. Now that we have written the word Ben, we need to continue our sentence. So we are going to say, and, let's write the word and. Remember boys and girls to keep your handwriting neat and spaced correctly. The next word afterwards is the word Mal. Now it looks like Mal is the name of a person. So we now need to write the word Mal with the capital letter M because it is a proper noun. So we are going to write capital letter M. And then we are continuing 
with the word or the name Mel. Now that we have identified where our capital letters go, let us continue the sentence. Let's take a look at our passage. So, so far we have written Ben and Mel. Now we need to decide where this sentence ends. If we read Ben and Mel are going on a field trip. That sounds like a complete sentence. So what we are going to do is complete the sentence up until the word trip, where we will put a full stop. So we are now going to write, are going on a field trip. So let us start with the word are. And remember boys and girls, when you are writing your letters, shape them correctly. If your letters are not shaped correctly, then your handwriting will not be neat. Make sure that each and every letter that is supposed to touch the dotted line is touching the dotted line and any letters that are going to touch the top line must also touch the top line. So we have said Ben and Mel are going on a field trip. So we say going on a field make sure that every letter that touches the top line boys and girls is actually meant to touch the top line and don't forget to make sure that they also touch the bottom line so let us continue field I hope you're writing with me. Field. Ben and Mel are going on a field trip. So the last word in our sentence is the word trip. Now remember we agreed that we are going to end our sentence here. So, in order to complete our sentence, we need to put a full stop. And there we have it, one full stop. The next sentence or the next word is the word they. Let's now take a look at our exercise to see how far we can go with that sentence. It says, they are going to the farm they are very. Now, the word very is not a good place to end a sentence. So let us try again and end somewhere else. They are going to the farm they. No, that does not make sense at all. So let us try and end the sentence a bit earlier at the word farm. They are going to the farm. Yes. This sounds correct, so we are going to end our sentence there. But before we end our sentence, we're going to start it. And since I don't have any more space on the board, I am going to start my new sentence on the new line. The word they is the one that begins the sentence. So it is capital letter T. And then we say they Make sure that you're shaping your letters and putting the correct spaces. They are, there we go. Then we write going. Be careful with your spacing and where your G ends. Going, don't forget the head of the I going very good to make sure your T touches the top of the line to and then we are saying the the last word that we agreed on is the word farm And we have completed our sentence. 
Now, because we have completed our sentence, we need to end our sentence with a full stop. And there we have it. Now we have two sentences. Let's read them together. Ben and Mel are going on a field trip. Full stop. They are going to the farm. So far, everything is making sense. Now we need to continue from where we left off. Remember, continuous writing is when we don't start on a new line like this, but rather start on the old line if there is space. And in this case, we had space. So we are going to start there. Let's take a look at our exercise for the next sentence we are going to make. Now the next sentence is going to start with the word they, because that is where we left off. So we're going to say, they are very excited, Ben? No. Let us stop at the word excited. So our sentence will say, they are very excited. So we're going to start with a capital letter T for the word they. So we're going to put our capital letter T, they, and then we are going to check, do we have enough space for the word are? Mm, I don't think so. So instead of squashing my letters, I am going to go to the next line. So we are going to say, they are, make sure that you're shaping your letters, very, and then we write the word excited. Please also make sure, boys and girls, that you are spelling your words correctly, because these are words that have been given to you. You're not making them up or trying to guess. They are very excited. Now, to end this sentence, we just need to put a full stop. Now, I want you to continue the rest of the punctuation for the sentences by yourselves. Remember, when you are starting a new sentence, you need to put a capital letter. But sometimes it is about the name of the person. And in that case, you need to also put a capital letter. Then, when you are ending your sentence, don't forget to put a full stop. Make sure that you space your letters carefully, your words carefully, and the same size for each of the letters. I'm going to see you when you are done after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. For our exercise now, boys and girls, let us turn to page 10. On page 10, we are going to be doing fractions. Now I know what you can see right now may be a little bit confusing, but don't worry, I'm going to explain all of it to you. Let's take a look at the board. Now the first thing you need to know about a fraction is that a fraction is a piece of the shape. Now it can be any shape, a square, a rectangle, or on the board, a circle. When we're talking about a fraction, it is only a piece, not the whole thing. So as it stands right now, the circle on the board is not a fraction. But if I were to make it a fraction, I need to divide it, which means to break it down. Another thing that you need to remember about fractions is that they have equal parts. And let me show you how. If I were to make this circle into half with a line, the line will start at the top and go right across. And this 
has broken the circle into two equal pieces. One, two. Now, if you take a look here, the two that is here is showing that this is the whole shape. So the whole shape is two pieces, one, two. But if I only want a fraction or a piece of the circle, let's say I want this side, then I have chosen one half of the circle, the one that is represented here. This is the piece of the circle. So, this two is showing that we have one, two pieces that make the whole circle. But I only want one. So, when we're writing our fractions, we say one and then a line and we write the two. If I were to cut the circle again, remember fractions need to be cut in equal pieces. This time, I am going to cut my circle this way. And if I take my ruler and cut my circle, I have now cut it in how many pieces? Let us count together. We have one, two, three, four. So our two at the bottom will now become a four. And if I only want one part of the circle, only one part, we now put a one on top to say this is one quarter of the shape. So if I now say that I would like to color one part of the shape, that means I'm only coloring one part. So this is one part of the shape. And that is the part that I will color. But if I want to color two parts of the shape, then that means that I will have a two on top, then a line, and then the four. Remember, the two on top is talking about the piece or pieces in the whole shape. So if I were to say to you, color two of the four parts that you can see, you will color this part and another part. So two pieces of the whole fraction. Then, now, if you were to tell me that teacher Mutsa, I think I want to color three parts of the shape. That means instead of putting one or two on top, you are going to put the number three. So we have three of the whole shape, which means the parts that we are going to color. So we have one, two, three parts. So each one is one quarter. But if we were to color all three of them, they now become three quarters. So let me shade these ones so you can tell the difference between the one shape and the other shape. So far, I have shaded one quarter, which means colored one quarter. So if I want to shade another quarter, I would look at another piece of the shape. So I'm now shading another quarter. And then, now I have shaded two quarters, this one. And if I say I want to shade another quarter or I must shade three quarters, four, that means I'm going to shade one, two, three parts of the shape. 
So let me shade three parts of the shape. And it's very simple like this. So remember, the top number you can see is talking about the piece or pieces of the whole shape. And then the bottom number is the how many pieces there are all together in the shape. Now that we know all of this, let us take a look at our exercise. In our exercise, we are going to color the number of pieces shown for each of the shapes. Now, number one, we've already done it on the board together and number two as well. But I want you to please take a look at the next ones and color. Remember, the bottom number is for the total number of pieces in the shape. And then the top number is the one that you are going to color. Take your time. Make sure that you pay attention when you are coloring, just in case you might color too many or too few. And if you're not sure, it's okay to ask for help. I will see you soon after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 081 74 3759 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. For our last exercise, boys and girls, let's go to page 11. On page 11, we are going to do some computation adding. And we're going to do it by decomposing using our tens and units. The example they have given you there is going to be your guideline. But just in case, let us do number one together. Now, as you can see, number one says 25 plus 19 equals. So first of all, we need to break it down to get our answer. Let's take a look at the board. Now, the first thing we're going to do is put our numbers in order by decomposing. First, we need to know which ones are our tens and which ones are our units. So we're going to start by labeling our tens. There they are. And first 10 is the two in 20. And the second one is the one in 10. So we are going to write these ones as 20 plus 10. Then after that, we need to identify our units. Our unit is five in the number 25 and nine in the number 19. So we are now going to say plus five plus nine. So that is what we are going to do. Now remember, we first need to add our tens together and then our units together. So let us look at our tens. The second stage now is to add 20 plus 10. Now what is 20 plus 10? Well, if you're clever and you have been doing your decade numbers, you know that you take away the zeros for both numbers and then you'll end up with 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1, boys and girls, is very easy. That is 3. But don't forget to add the zero that we left behind. So it is 30. So we are done with that part. We now need to add 5 plus 9. Don't forget to bring down the plus sign so that it, you can add later on. So what is 5 plus 9? 
You can either use your fingers or your counters. In this case, we are going to use our fingers. Now we already have five and we need to add nine more. So we put up our nine fingers and then we continue counting. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So our answer, boys and girls, is 14. So now we have completed the second part where we have decomposed and now we are going to put it back together again by going through the third stage. Now the third stage is when we simply add 30 plus 14. Now you can do that by counting on, by using counters, or by putting 30 on top of 14. So we are going to do it this way for a change today. Then we say zero, ooh, ooh, this is a plus, remember we are adding. <laughs> zero plus four we have zero and now we add four so our answer is four and then we say three plus one and if we have three and we add one more we get four so our last answer that we have of 30 plus 14 will equal 44. This also means that 25 plus 19 equals 44. So remember boys and girls, when you're adding, make sure that first things first is to put the numbers in their place value. And then after that, you're going to add the place values together and then you will add the numbers you have as your result. Then you will get your answer. Please take your time, use counters or your number line or you can use this method of adding for your final answer. Take your time, have so much fun, and I will see you after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. We have now come to the end of our lesson and I hope that you had fun. Remember, if anything is too difficult or you can't remember, you can always ask for help. Just make sure that you finish the exercises by yourself. Now that we are done, it is important for us to sanitize at the end. Remember, when we sanitize after lessons, we're trying to make sure that whoever we see afterwards, we are staying safe from them and to protect them as well. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. I wonder though, I want to go outside and play with my friend. Zashi said he would be here just now, but I'm not sure where he is. Oh, hello Zashi, how are you? <laughs> So, from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today and goodbye! <laughs>